In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to make fantastic sounding textured pads using granular synthesis in Pigments 2. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of sound design, with building a fantastic live keyboard setup and with mastering Ableton Live. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. So today we're talking about granular synthesis. And granular synthesis is just a fancy word that means taking a sample and chopping it up into little pieces that are played back at random times and for random duration. So at its basis, this is sample synthesis and Arturia Pigments does this really well. So let's have a look at how it's done here. We can go into a default patch and choose sample. And to start, um, it's just a sample. So let's pick a bowed sound here. So just a sample, like a regular sampler. And in order to make this granular, we have to hit this button. And now we've got what is, you know, typically granular synthesis. Now, granular synths have four different controls that are main and then some ways to alter those controls. So the first control is the sample start, which just controls where in the sample you're starting from. The second control is density, which is measured in Hertz, although pigments does give you the option to choose different ways to measure that. Um, and that just controls how many times per second a grain is made. So at one second, it's like a quarter note at 60 beats per minute. And then time controls how long that grain lasts for. Our last control number four is the envelope, and this is an amplitude envelope or volume. So how quickly we hear that start. And this functions a little bit like an LFO in that it repeats at the same rate that you have set in your density. So those are our main controls. Now we start to hear what we're typically familiar with as granular synthesis when this time uh, lasts longer than the duration of the density. Right, so this just sort of sounds like, you know, an arpeggiator, but once it gets past it, then we have what typically sounds to our ears like granular synthesis. And even just with this, We already have the starts of what is a pretty interesting textured pad, but we're gonna keep going because in synthesis, it's when we begin to modulate uh, these ideas that we get really interesting sounds. And if you want to know more about synthesis, uh, you can go to the link on the screen where I've got a quick synth map to help you really learn about the basics of synthesis for keyboard players. Now, let's start over here on the left-hand side. This is how we add a little bit of randomness to our density. So the first thing that I'm going to do is alter this pitch. Now we can have it detune either just up, just below, or in both. And I like both because that gets us a nice chorusing effect. So here's no detuning. And listen to what happens as I bring this pitch in. Okay, we're getting closer to a pad, right? Because we've got that difference in pitch and it's starting to chorus a little bit. Now, this control is also important because it allows for a bit of leeway away from our start time. So as I begin to move this, you're gonna see different grains being created in different directions away from this line. Okay, cool sound, right? Now we can change the direction these are being played at. So if I put it all the way this way, we're only gonna get backward sounds. If I put it this way, only forward sounds. And in the middle, we get both. So I'm going straight in the middle. That's cool, guys. Now we're getting really close to like a textured. sound. Having that underneath a piano part brings so much 
energy. It's amazing. So let me know in the comments below if you plan on using this granular synth patch for live performance or in one of your tracks. You can also change the density a little bit, add some randomness. So what that's gonna do is randomly change the rate at which these grains are being created. Right, adding a little bit more unpredictability, making it more textured, making it more interesting to listen to. Okay, so now we also have the ability to alter the time in a couple of ways. So first, size is going to change how long each grain is by a little bit. Okay, so just a little bit goes a long way here. Now, width and volume, I really like using. So width is going to change the panning on those sounds, the, the individual grains, as I bring this up. Comes a little bit more stereo, and volume changes the volume of the individual grains. So too much, and I feel like it gets a bit watered out. Cool, so we got the start of a really nice pad here. I'm actually gonna go down into this regular uh, envelope here and I'm just gonna bring up the release. And if you're unfamiliar with these terms, again, make sure you grab a copy of that quick synth map. Fantastic, okay, we gotta turn it into a pad now. So let's add some stuff here. I'm gonna add a bit of unison. Okay, we've got something interesting happening. I'm gonna head over to my effects section and I'm gonna start by adding just a tiny bit of distortion. Not a lot, just give it a little crunch. And for my next effect here, pop it through a bit of compression. And that's gonna help even out some of those grains a little bit. So pull the dry wet down here. Bit of a longer attack. Cool. And then for the last effect here, I'm gonna add some reverb. Okay, this sounds awesome. Check it out when I'm playing full chords. Now, if you're digging the way Pigment sounds, you can grab a copy of this synth for yourself from the description below. And right now on the screen, I've got two videos up. One comparing pigments to serum and the other that's gonna show you my five favorite sounds inside pigments. If you did get value from this video, please make sure you click that like and subscribe button and I will see you next time on livekeyboardist.com.